All right, we're on a roll. We're going to do another video from Physical Science 1116. And again, this is a couple of problems that I know students in this pace often struggle with. Having uh, been a learning center supervisor and teacher for several years now, and uh, actually I went through uh, these paces when I was a student. Now they didn't have this edition of the physical science paces, uh, but let me, uh, let me see if I can give you some help. Again, we're gonna use the magic triangle to solve some of these and set up some of these problems. I think if you watch these few examples and then uh, finish them in your pace, you can apply what you've learned to the other problems and uh, hopefully you'll be successful. We're looking at page E in your workbook, all right? And you should have already read pages six through 12. In doing that, you should have noticed that there was a formula. Force equals mass times acceleration. Now before I fill in the magic triangle, I want you to think about where would these quantities go in the magic triangle? All right, think about that. Remember there's two things being multiplied together. When we see a formula written this way, the two things being multiplied together would both go on the bottom. So I'm gonna put M here, acceleration here, and the force goes on the top. Now a little bit later, the pace talks about momentum. Because M is being used so much for mass, we can't use M again for momentum, and so uh, they use the letter P. I'm not sure I can explain why, we just have to kind of know that. So P is momentum, and again, mass and velocity are, to, are being multiplied together, so we'll put them down here on the bottom. All right, now let's come over here and look at problem uh, 50 on page E. You can go back and fill in some of the other problems a little, in a little bit then. So the problem tells us that the force is 20 newtons, and in the first problem it says what would the acceleration be if we had a mass of 5? So let's think about our magic triangle. We're going to use this formula right here. The force is going to be 20. I'm going to use my green pen just so we get a little contrast here. So I'm going to put 20 in. I'm solving for the acceleration, so I'm going to leave the letter A there and plug in 5 for the mass. And now we take the top number, divide by the bottom, ta-da! And now you know what the acceleration is. What units are you going to use for acceleration? Well, they're keeping all of the units pretty standard with these problems, which is nice of them, okay? So when we're dealing with newtons and kilograms, the velocity is gonna come out in meters per second per second, which again, the shortcut is meters per second squared, all right? Then on that problem, it changes it up and says, all right, what would the acceleration be if we plugged in 40? So now for problem B, you're going to change this and plug in 40 down here, but leave 20 up here. Solve it the same way. 20 divided by 40, you're going to get a decimal number, all right? And that will be the answer for B. And then uh, it also says to plug in 100 for the kilograms. So you'll change the number down here, divide, and all of a sudden you've got the acceleration in a decimal number. Same units for all three of those. All right, pretty easy, huh? When you get to problem 55, 51 and 52, you're gonna to have to go back and use some of the formulas that we covered back in the previous video when we talked about page C, all right? Let's move ahead now and uh, talk a little bit about momentum. <clears throat> momentum is mass times velocity. And think about the momentum of, let's say, a semi, a very large truck, okay? And even if it's traveling very slowly, or take a train, for instance, humongous mass, even if it has a very small velocity, it has a tremendous amount of momentum. And so a very slow-moving train, if it hits an object on the tracks, okay? Picture a, uh, a stalled truck on the tracks, nobody's in it, all right? just the truck is stuck there, even if the train's moving slowly, all of that momentum hits that truck, does a tremendous amount of damage. Um, I'm a bus driver, and I've watched several videos about trains, even moving slowly, 
hitting the back end of a bus. You do a Google search on YouTube and uh, look at some of those video clips. Amazing the amount of momentum and what happens to those buses. So the momentum before a collision has to be the same as the momentum after the collision. Let's illustrate that by setting up problem 65. The way 65 is worded often gives students difficulty because they can't picture it. So I've tried to draw a picture here to illustrate what's happening. It says, in a railroad switching yard, a fully loaded boxcar with a weight of 65,000 kilograms hits an empty boxcar weighing 35,000 kilograms. Okay, so those are the masses. Kilograms, remember, is mass. Before the collision, so we're going to let this divider right here represent the collision. Before the collision took place, this car was moving at a velocity of 6.5 meters per second. The other car was not moving at all. All right. After the collision, the fully loaded car has slowed down. You see that? Some of its speed is getting transferred to the empty car and the fully loaded car has slowed down. So its velocity is now 3.2, and the question is what is the speed of the empty car after the collision if it was not moving, hence the zero, before the collision. So let's see what the total momentum of this system is before the collision. We're going to take this m, mass of the fully loaded, times the velocity of the fully loaded, so 65,000 times 6.5, we're going to add 35,000 times its velocity, which is zero, okay? So this whole thing just becomes zero. So really all we have to solve for is this to get the number. Now that's going to be equal to this velocity, or this uh, mass, 65,000, times its velocity plus 35,000 times the unknown V2. I'm going to let you finish that. This is a very simple algebra problem. Use your calculator, multiply this number together, equals, multiply these two numbers together, plus 35,000 V2. To finish the problem, you're going to take that answer, subtract it from both sides of the equation, which will make this number smaller, and then the last step is to divide by the 35,000, and you'll know what the velocity of that car was. Let's talk about number 66, and then you should be able to do 64 and 67 on your own. 66 talks about the mass of a gun, and of some artillery shell, and a gun um, firing it says a 220 kilogram artillery shell, so 220 uh, kilogram artillery shell, leaves a naval gun at a velocity of 200 meters per second. If the recoil of the velocity of the gun is negative 10, what is its mass? Now notice how I have this set up. The mass of the shell times the velocity of the shell, so that would be the momentum of the shell plus the momentum of the gun has to equal zero. Now the reason I did this is because they stuck in a negative number for the velocity of the gun. All right, and that just means it's moving in the opposite direction that the shell was moving. So the first thing I'm going to do once I've plugged in the numbers is I'm going to take this negative 10 mg, move it to the other side of the equation. Because as soon as I do it, you know the old saying in algebra, switch sides, switch signs. So I switch sides, negative 10 mg now becomes positive 10 mg on the other side of the equal sign. Go ahead and multiply these two together, which I did. And then the last step, and you know this from pre-algebra, is you just divide both sides by 10 and you're done. You have the mass, and of course you remember, mass is in kilograms. Don't forget to include your units as part of your answer. That, uh, that basically takes you up to the checkup. And I hope that uh, <clears throat> as you solve those problems, check your answer, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that, in the score key, 
Um, as you're checking your answer, look how you solved your problem. You should be showing your work in your pace. Compare how you solved the problem to how the score key solved it. See if you used the right formula, first of all. See if you plugged in the right numbers, and then maybe you just made a little mistake in a calculation. Um, then on page uh, H, before you do your checkup, notice we have several formulas listed there. And uh, if you'll study those, you'll see that a lot of those can be plugged into the magic triangle. So when you do your checkup, use the magic triangle. You have the formulas right there to look at. It's not cheating to use these formulas to solve the problems. They're right there for reference. And I hope that you'll be very successful as you do the checkup on pages G and H. And we'll be back. There are more problems um, in this pace that we need to talk about before we finish.